Two more turns without it snapping and killing me. Welcome back to Freeman's Garage. Right now we are going to assemble the front suspension on the abandoned 56 Chevy. All of this is original 1956 parts that we refurbished in earlier videos. Also in the previous video we cleaned up and painted our frame up here at the front so it's all ready to accept our parts and this thing is gonna look sweet with everything put back on. The only brand new parts we're putting on the front suspension are these brand new bushings, which I bought these ones because they say NASCAR, and the lower ball joints, which are in one of these boxes full parts, and I think there's brand new bump stops in there from Dan Chuck as well, so and maybe maybe some other goodies in there. We'll, we'll get in there. So yeah, let's get cracking on it because once we get the bushings and ball joints in, then we get to break out my homemade tool to compress the coil springs. The coil spring will be sandwiched in between the lower control arm and the upper control arm, and the homemade tool will let us squish it all down so we can get everything bolted into place. You'll see. Now, should we start with the driver's side or the passenger side first? Let's start with the D side, the Delta side, which for some reason I've got all the driver's side stuff set on the passenger side of the car and the passenger side stuff set on the driver's side of the car, which, you know, uh, when a guy does that, he's got to hope that if he forgets which is which, you know, he would think, oh, well, you know, I'm pretty smart. I probably would put the driver's side stuff on the driver's side of the car, passenger side stuff on the passenger side of the car. You know, in case I forget, it would just, I could default to that and it would make sense, but... We're going to use a combination of bits and pieces to press the first bushing in. This is where you, you got to remember that after you get the first one in, you got to put your cross shaft in. Because if you put both bushings in and you don't put the cross shaft in, you're back to square one. We're doing this over here because I've just got too much stuff in the way everywhere else, so, you know, don't you know? Just making sure that we're getting started straight, which it looks like we are. This angle iron is just a support so that we don't crush the uh, control arm. And then we're still looking good. You're looking good in the neighborhood. We're a good half the way there. Now we're three quarters of the way there. That is perfect, sitting in there all the way, nice and flush. Now time for this side. We got our cross shaft, and I am opting for a smidgen of anti-sneeze, just to help for uh, disassembling in the future. We're making sure to put the cross shaft back in with the numbers upward, just the way it came out. Gotta make sure that we're going in George straight. Looks like we are. Just a camel hair left to go. That sounds good. Yeah, perfect. Looking pretty good, huh? Turns freely like it should. It's getting exciting. It's gonna go on the car like this. There you go, upper control arm. Let's do the bottom. It's just a little bit of paint that got in here. I'll just quickly sand that out. I'm gonna make sure that this goes back in the exact way it came out as well. Put some anti-sneeze on here as well. 
Don't need a whole lot. The NIC should make taking this stuff apart again in the future easier for whoever does it, whether it's me or someone else, and whether it's in 20 years or 100 years. Oh, I don't want to scratch my paint. We need to, there we go, get it in before we put the bushings in. Otherwise we won't be able to get it. I'm going to do just a light tap here on the trunk just to kind of get things seated a little bit. Keep it from falling apart in my hands when I move it to where we are going to whack it hard. Alright, looks like uh, we're ready to give her the, the beans. The Boston baked beans. This has not been the easiest, but she's going. We're almost there. A couple uh, more wackaroos and we should be in. It's a couple weeks later. My hand is almost back to normal. It's a bone or two that's prominent. Not good. Hopefully that goes away. Over the last couple weeks I've been meditating, preparing my inner self to tackle this bushing installation once again. So hey, what a great excuse to go shopping for brand new tools. I figure a few bucks. A guy can't get hurt. I got the big one. The 20 tonner. I put her together and tested her out over on the Freeman's Garage extra channel. And in that video, I almost hurt myself testing out the press. Something that I could just delete and you would never know about it, but I leave it in because that's reality. And you never know, if the right person sees that, it could prevent them from doing the same thing and uh, avoiding facial reconstruction surgery. It actually pains me to have spent money on this because I have more than one floor press. But they're back home, 1,500 miles away. But hey, why not have three? Why not have one on both ends of the country? This is the control arm that we left off on when I destroyed my hand. Just getting her set up and testing things out because I really haven't spent much time with this press. Just wanted to make sure that uh, the RAM's good, that we didn't have to bleed it and things like that. And things are looking good because we're almost pressed in all the way now. The last little bit that I was fighting with that hammer. Even though I don't want to rebuy tools and equipment that I already have back home and have had forever, I don't want to rebuy everything down here in Tejas. I'm uh, just going to give in and Start buying the things that I need. You can slip through the cracks and get by doing things like these bushings on the garage floor and whatnot, you know, sometimes, but boy, I tell you, it just destroys your body and takes 10 times longer to do anything. This one's pretty much in all the way. It can maybe go just a, a skosh further. This one's got just a tiny little bit left. Let's see if we can't get her pressed in the rest of the way. Just a tiny bit left to go. That's just about, that's just about it. Spot on the ears. Survey says, perfect. She's got some battle scars. So I'm going to give this a quick touch-up with the rattle can and then let's get rocking and rolling. Let's get the rest of these bushings pressed in and start assembling. Alright, let's do the other lower control arm. Grab a couple of bushings. Are these the lower control arm bushings? Yeah, they are, right? Or are they these ones? <laughs> I get my part numbers mixed up. 
these are 5196. Okay, those are the upper. Okay. Yeah. These are the lower. Just gonna clean things up a little bit with some paper that has sand on it. Just a little bit of overspray in there. All right, the cross shaft came out of this control arm this way. It wasn't that way, it was this way. So we'll do that. And then we need to get this in first, which means we're gonna scratch up our paint a little bit. Maybe just a little bit, but we'll do a touch up on this too anyways. A little anti-sneeze on there. There we go. That's what we want to see right there. All right, one more to go. I would say that's in. In like Flynn. It don't get any better than that right there. Do a little touch up paint on it and let's install this stuff on the front of the car. It just dawned on a guy that he still has to clean up all of our hardware. So while the touch up paint is curing on the control arms, I'm gonna do this in the glass cabinet. It never ends, does it? All right, there's one more thing I wanna do real quick, and then we'll start assembling everything up here. I wanna get the last of the old grease out of the upper ball joints while the control arms are off the car and easier to access. I just wanna take advantage of this having the control arm out of the car here so we can really make sure we get as much of this old stuff out as possible. Because once we assemble this, these suspension parts on the car, and you got that coil spring, I'm pumping by the way, not getting anything out yet. Once we have everything assembled on the car, there we go, with the uh, coil spring compressed in there, can't, uh, just be popping ball joints without redoing all the compressing the coil spring. You gotta take the whole thing apart and put it all back together again. Hey, you got your bib on. Just trying to keep the mess to a minimum. That's new grease. Oh, you know what? Is this tube empty? <laughs> God. 
I've got a love-hate relationship with grease guns. What a waste, you know? I don't care what you say. You cannot always get the air out. And smashing them upside down on the concrete doesn't always do the trick. Trust me, I know from experience. I'm letting trapped air out. Grease guns! If you want a mess and you want it everywhere. Grease guns. There we go. Sometimes when you can't get any grease to come out of your grease gun, that'll do the trick. Just beat the snot out of it upside down. Doesn't always work though. I know this bib is ridiculous, but I'm just hoping to save time by not having a giant mess to clean up. Although this little tube of grease is probably going to run out. There's not going to be enough to do the other upper control arm and it's the last grease in stock here at Freeman's Garage, which means we'd have to go out in public and have contact with humans. The biggest issue with that is it would just waste a lot of time. Guy needs to have more grease on hand, you know? Keep those consumable items stocked up. Seeing this old grease come out is validating this procedure as not being too big of a waste of time. And we're out of grease. And it just sprained my wrist. You can see there's some nasty stuff starting to come out right there. We just need some more grease. I could stuff all this new grease that we lost when we switched tubes back into a tube. But that would be ridiculous and here in Freeman's Garage we don't do anything that's ridiculous. Right? We make perfect sense all the time. Every time. And we never make mistakes. But I'm just gonna invest the 45 minutes it would take and I'm gonna go buy a case of tubes for the big gun. And then get back here and knock it out. It'll be worth it, man. I swear. Uneventful trip to the parts store. Other than somebody almost taking me out, cutting across three lanes of traffic to get into a choke and puke joint. If you're gonna miss your turn, you should probably just keep going. You can turn around and come back. But you know, that's just the way it goes. Alright, let's see how much nasty stuff comes out of there. Okay, we're getting the green stuff out. That's our new green that we're now getting rid of. Replacing it with the red. Oh yeah, there's some dark, nasty stuff coming. Alright, I think we're good. We don't need to go overboard. I mean, we want all the, the dirt out of here. Or whatever it could be in here, crud. But we don't want to waste a whole tube of grease, you know? Yeah, that looks great. Original dust boot. All right, let's do the other upper control arm real fast. All right, let's see what comes out of this one. Hopefully it's just like the other. Not bad at all. Hopefully that's what we get here. Yeah, that's not really bad. And I ditched the bib idea, okay? Because that's, I mean, come on, what are we? Little schoolgirls here. Alright, we need the lower ball joints now. And we need to find them. Let's start opening boxes until we do. Did I order a cassette tape? I think that's wheel studs. No, I don't hear I don't hear ball joints in here. Hear them in this.
Oh yeah, it is. Premium. I've never had an issue with Dorman. Ever. Probably never gonna get that car key back. All right, it was a washer. We're good. This is pretty straightforward. It can only go on one way. The bolts come up from the bottom. And then washer. And then nut on top. The torque spec on this is so they don't come apart. Now the passenger side lower control arm, get this ball joint in place. All right, so the driver's side parts are all ready to go. I set all the passenger side parts right there. And I need to scooch this Rambler over a little bit so that I can get this fender off and just carry it outside and set it down somewhere and get it out of our way. We need to find the brand new bump stops in those boxes. Probably in this little one that I thought sounded like a cassette tape. Yeah, this isn't bump stops. Seals, and not the swimming kind. These are not for today. I'm trying to think, where did I order them from? They're Dan Chucks, and I believe I ordered them from Summit. All right, this is a Summit box. Can't show you those yet. The shocks are a surprise. They're nothing fancy, I just, just don't want to reveal yet. You know, I gotta give you some reason to stick around and keep coming back to Freeman's Garage and subscribing and sharing the videos with all your family and friends. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Ooh, sticker. Nice, nice. Those are for a different day. Bump stop, bump stop. Made in the USA. It's the way it's supposed to be. This is what we're replacing. High school kid in the 70s. Jumps train track. Many time. That's what you end up with. And we're putting this brand new one in. Oh. That is satisfying. The reason why these nuts are so rusty and the rest of the hardware looks like this is because while I was cleaning all that hardware in the blast cabinet, I started to realize that a lot of it's actually pretty pitted. So I just quit wasting my time and called it quits. So we will replace all that hardware, but right now we're going to use it just to get all this put back on the car and finish this job. And yes, there will be a compressed coil spring when we go to put the brand new hardware in. So what we'll do is we'll just remove and replace one bolt at a time and that'll be a safe way of doing it. And so we won't crank all this stuff down real tight. That way when we do get new hardware in and we do replace it, it's quick and easy. We're not having to actually tear things down and redo a bunch of work. That makes sense to me anyways. What do you think? We're leaving the spindles loose too right now for installation purposes. We're gonna wanna spin this so that we have the flat side. Facing up, we might as well just put these in so they don't get lost. And they're just going to sit loose. Excuse my reach.
All right, coil spring time. This little notch here, that guy right there, that goes facing up. Now, up in here, there's nowhere that you need to snag the spring into, but up down here there is. It's kind of a little dead end right here. So that's what I'm trying to make happen in here. I mean, there is a little kind of a ring. You got to get the top of the spring around, but there's no little stoppy area like for the bottom. Oh, come on, don't scratch my brand new paint. We're going to tighten the upper ball joint up. Just a little bit here, just to where the, the threads start sticking out of the castle nut. We're not actually torquing her down, if you know what I mean. We just want to make sure we got good threads on there for when we are compressing the coil spring. All right, so we got this all set up here. Ready to rock and roll, ready for compression. And these are gonna be our safety device. And drop one of these down here. One down here. We got a couple nuts, of course, for those two bolts. And what we're gonna do is, while we are compressing the coil spring with our homemade tool, as soon as the lower control arm is up high enough to get these long bolts into those holes on the cross shaft, you can get these nuts on there. That'll be like making it to the island and being safe from the alligators. Because as soon as we get onto those long bolts, if the homemade tool or anything comes apart, those should catch it. We'll also have a floor jack under there too. And speaking of homemade tools, we got a fat one up real quick. We're gonna use this quarter inch plate, five ace ready rod, and a couple five ace steel couplers. It's gonna go a little something like this. Measure for our top plate, because we're going to have a top plate and a bottom plate, we're going to make out of that quarter inch. Okay, we'll go about two inches. Take advantage of the passenger side lower control arm, not on the car yet. And yeah, let's just go with five. The reason why we need to make this tool is because it's almost impossible to get the coil springs in these cars without it. The coil spring compressors that you can buy and rent from the parts store, yeah, you can get the springs in the car, but then you can't get the tool out. You have to cut the tool in half to get it out. My entire life, looking back on my childhood, one of the biggest challenges was always subpar chucks that would just make drilling a nightmare. And drill bits that couldn't cut anything. In fact, this drill press we're using came from the house that I grew up in. There we go. 
There we go, all the way through. All right, let's step up to a bigger bit now. drilled out to a half inch and we need to be at five eighths inch for our five eighths ready rod because this needs to fit through there and I can't seem to find a five eighths drill bit anywhere here at Freeman's Garage and we're not going to just do the whole reamer out thing because we need this to fit tight we don't want to be all loosey-goosey and have this stuff go strippy strippy or kersnappy in our facey. So I'm gonna skip to my loo down to the store of hardware and try to find a 5 ace drill bit for under 20 simoleons and so I might as well just get all the replacement hardware while I'm there. Two birds with one stone. Let's set the passenger side parts on real quick before going to the hardware store just so that it's it's already done when we get back. Oh, that's quality rubber. It smells like a hockey puck. Train's going. I wonder if there's any hobos or any restless riders on it. You know, if riding the rails wasn't a federal offense, guess how much the drill bit was? $19.99. And they didn't have the hardware that we needed, so we'll just do without. Let's try out this. Brand new Milwaukee drill bit.
All right, this is the big moment. This is the payoff right here. Touching real quick on the safety measures here before we start cranking on this. We know that here at Freeman's Garage, these are not how-to videos. We're just friends hanging out here in the garage and I'm showing you what I'm doing. If you decide to compress a coil spring the way that I decide to compress a coil spring, your mileage may vary. And to ease your mind as far as my safety goes right now for this, <laughs> with what you are about to watch me do. This is 5 ace ready rod. Really strong stuff. You can do this with 3 quarter. You just got to remount that hole a little bit. The hole that we slid this down through, which is actually the hole that the top of the shock absorber sticks up through. And the plate steel that we're using is quarter inch. That's really thick. And then we got a big coupler. And on the bottom, it's the exact same setup our quarter inch, our coupler. The version of this tool that I made years ago that I have in the barn back home up by the Canana border, I used washers and welded them to the coupler. So I've got a big, big heavy washer welded to the coupler and then that sits on steel plate just like this and I got that on the top and the bottom and it is actually a three-quarter inch rod. You can even use a longer coupler if you can find one or you can double them up and weld them together for extra strength. But you're always going to be relying on the threads on the ball joints and their castle nut. So you could keep beefing up the top and the bottom but you're always going to have the castle nuts on the ball joints so I mean just always going to be your weakest link no matter what. Life is all about choices. Floor jack sitting here on standby for when we need it. Let's see what happens. There's never any guarantee with any of this stuff so you just gotta do the best you can. Alright, what's going on down here? Anything happening? Be prepared for that to make a big noise when it goes. All right, let's keep playing with our luck. I guess if a guy's got glasses of safety this close to his eyeballs, he should just throw them on. You never know. We're at the point now where if this breaks, we could be killed, or even worse. I'm not concerned, but I'm kinda just trying to keep the jack in between me and uh, <laughs> the uh, grenade that might go off. We're getting close to our safety catch bolts. You know, this is looking good. Not gonna lie though, it's always a little tense when you're doing this stuff. We got our two safety bolts on and just in time because it's uh, starting to feel a little sketchy. Let's keep going though. It's been just a few minutes for you but for me it's been about 20 minutes or so of cranking on this and then double checking everything making sure nothing's about to come flying apart and the spring has been compressing great but over the last couple minutes this gap here we haven't been closing it very quickly 
almost like something was kind of jammed up and I think it was because these bolts are too thick so I took them out and then swapped in a skinnier bolt and then things started moving better and this is one of the factory bolts here I'm starting to put those in this is a relief that these skinnier bolts are letting us close the gap like that I was actually kind of starting to get concerned that things weren't working out oh yeah that's a really big relief that means that the other side's going to go a lot smoother Did I put the wrong bolt in there? His hair. I gotta cut this stuff off. Oh, I'm dumb. <laughs> I need to swap those two bolts around. I handled butter at lunch. Now this side, and it should go a lot smoother. Knock on particle board. This all looks good. Look at the bottom plate though. That's quarter inch too. I wonder if that's from when we were jammed up on those uh, safety bolts that were too thick. We could replace it or we could uh, advance the design and double it up but it'll be fine. I am glad though that I did not cheap out and I went and bought that 5 ace drill bit because we really needed a proper sized hole. Less than the chance of, you know, your plate getting past the coupler. Which out of this whole setup, the thing I would be most concerned about with would be the hardware store coupler. Who knows where they get that from? But the ready rod, that's that's uh that's strong stuff, that's the real deal. Alright, here we go. Just gotta get through this one more time without getting decapitated. This side's going a lot better. I've been working on it for, for about 10 minutes. Already got one of the safety bolts in place, one of the long ones, and then shortly here when I get things tightened up a little bit more, I'll swap over to the, the shorter safety bolts, the, the skinnier ones, if I need to. Let's see what happens here. there. We're about to get a second safety bolt on. Alright, two more turns without it snapping and killing me. so close. Come on. Come on. I had to cheat a little bit and just force some things to happen. Ooh, actually that might have been a mistake. Getting to that point, boys. The old back ski is 
It's been about two weeks on this video, hasn't it? Next time it'll go faster. Next thing you know, we'll finally be buying wheels and putting them on here, which we still gotta uh, decide which ones we want. And remember, I do have a motor for this car. It's just on the other end of the country and we can't get it out of where it's stored until spring. <laughs> All the snow and ice needs to go away. We are almost free from danger. As soon as we get the pressure off this, we know we'll be good to go. Safety wise. Is this the point where I realized that I put everything on the wrong side? Look at what we did. We stripped that out. That looks awesome. We did a pretty gosh darn good job, didn't we? Just imagine this thing when it's finally sitting on wheels and tires. It's gonna look sweet. When things get tough, do not give up. Just keep going. You're capable of a lot more than you think. And success is just right around the bend. Anyways. I'm gonna go in and clean up and hit the easy chair and watch an episode of Six Million Dollar Man. And I'm sending you to the video where we originally ripped all this suspension off the car. Why can't you see what you're doing to me?